In this class we want to talk about international selling and look at some of the issues that arise when companies attempt to sell internationally. For a start we have to recognise that international selling has opened up many opportunities for businesses and allows for trading on a much wider scale which enables companies to gain the advantages of economies of scale, the economies due to size and are also able to diversify their activities so as to decrease risk perhaps of um, failing markets in one particular centre. So there are advantages, major advantages for companies to engage in international selling but there are also many other issues that need to be considered. So a company can sell internationally by joining or working with agents and exporters and subsidiaries, joint ventures and other intermediaries. So there are many uh, facilities that have come into existence to facilitate international selling. Specialist agents with specialist knowledge of markets and exporters. Subsidiary companies in uh, overseas areas that can take the product and sell it on or produce the product under license. The UK government supports foreign trade and investments have been undertaken to support businesses wishing to expand internationally. It's not just the UK government. Uh, I think it's fair to say that most governments in the world see the advantages of international trade and they want to engage in international trade because it's to their advantage to do so. Uh, their companies or their countries I should say prosper as a result of international trade. However there are problems. There are cultural barriers to trade for example that need to be taken into consideration. Culture is an important factor that must be taken into consideration when planning international selling. Uh, the culture of a country is important and it's important that the sellers understand the culture. The culture of a country is determined by the way people live. It's, it's learned behaviour and accepted social norms of the country. So the, the company must learn what the culture is what is acceptable and what's not acceptable? What is the the way of living? How do people live there and what's expected of the company? So what's the social norm? What, what, what is the way the people live? And the company should try to fit in to that and sell within that constraint if that's what it is. Different cultures present different buying behaviours and these behaviours need to be analysed in order to meet customer needs. So some countries like big department stores, other countries might like a lot of small shops on, on high streets, some countries like more personalised selling, some are quite happy to deal with online sales it varies, it varies across countries, it depends on the culture of the country, it depends on the people. But when looking at cultural barriers the sales team must understand the cultural diversity and be able to adapt the sales approach to meet specific needs. So the, the, the salespeople know the culture in the country in which they live perhaps and, and they know where the, the product is produced, their base, their homeland. But the need to learn what the culture is in the, the country to which they aspire to sell. If they are going to sell in a different country they must know the culture of that country and they must be able to deal with that diversity, that difference. Salespeople should develop cultural skills. These skills will enable them to adopt and relate to customers' needs in different cultural environments. So the, the salespeople need to adopt. The, the people in the, in the country which is to receive the product, we can't expect them to adopt to the product. It's the product and the company 
that must adapt to the people. We can't expect a whole country to change because a company wants to sell its products there. It's the company that must accommodate the culture of the, the country to which it's, it's selling. Cultural skills enable people to show respect towards others, show respect towards their needs and their culture, show respect towards their beliefs, their traditions, towards their language, their music, their art. Uh, the company needs to understand the importance of these things to the people to which it's attempting to sell. It must be able to communicate with the people effectively and must also be able to uh, deal with people non-verbally. It must be able to present an image of the product and of itself that fits with what is required within that country. Uh, it, it, it may be an ethical position, a system of belief, it may be support for for some local charities or it may be the history of the company and the way it's developed and how it's behaved in other countries. So it should be able to communicate effectively and show non-verbally through its actions that it fits with what the country expects. And the company must be able to cope under pressure and be able to deal with ambiguity when faced with cultural barriers. When there are cultural issues the company must be able to cope, it must be able to draw on resources and have anticipated problems and draw on the resources to deal with the issues so that it's able to continue to sell in that society. The company should be considerate and understanding towards other people's values, needs and viewpoints. The company doesn't have a monopoly of truth. It doesn't have the answers to everything. It doesn't have the, the right and proper view and the only single right and proper view of situations. Other people are entitled to have viewpoints as well. And their viewpoints may be rooted in their history, in their culture, in their background and there may be a diversity, there may be a difference and it's for the company to to deal with this and have the resources and the capacity to deal with the difference and to at the same time continue to trade in that country. The company should be able to to work on its own initiatives and independently. The company should be able to work out what is required, work out strategies that accommodate the local communities, accommodate their backgrounds, their the cultural diversity and to engage in trade given what it knows about that diversity. It could be a matter of aesthetics. Aesthetics is to deal with beauty and colour and form and taste. Um, but it could be a cultural barrier. It could be that people have a different emphasis in some countries. They, they have a different culture, they have a different tradition, they have uh, differences that, that are not necessarily monetary. It could be an orientation, a way of thinking and their perception of what is nice may be different to the companies. Their perception of what is beautiful may be different to the companies. So it's for the company to determine what is acceptable within that society and to market products that match that. The sales team and marketing must take into account positive and negative elements of product design packaging, advertising, company logo and local preferences should be taken into account. The product design should meet with the requirements of the local society, of the receiving society. The packaging should be suitable 
for that market. The advertising should fit with their, their culture. If it's a highly religious society, then certain advertising would not be suitable, perhaps. Everything must fit together so that the company fits um, consistently. It fits snugly within that new society. Colour represents different emotions, for example. In the West, we consider black as mourning. We, we wear black at funerals. But in Eastern countries, many of them, they may wear white. And white is the colour of mourning. It's just an example of radical differences, big differences. But it's not just in, in the context of uh, this example, but it, it could cut across many examples of what is acceptable. It could be in music, it could be in art, in video, in cinema. It could be design of products, design of cars, the design of houses, of kitchen utensils. It can be in any area. The, the products should suit the local market and should fit with the requirements of the local market. There are religious uh, issues as well in <coughs> dealing with uh, overseas markets. It's a, in a sense it's a cultural barrier because people may come from different religious backgrounds. So salespeople selling overseas must have an understanding of religion and its Im the impact it plays on the lives of people. Some countries are uh, see themselves as very religious. Other countries may be more secular. Some countries uh, may not have recognized religions. Some may have very strong religious ties to certain religions. So it's important that the, the company understands this. Salespeople in marketing must be able to make modifications to products and selling techniques uh, in, in order to meet customer needs as well as respect religious beliefs. So it's important that the image of the product fits with the religious beliefs of the of the, the people in the country. It doesn't offend them. Perhaps if they didn't ask for the product, the company wishes to sell the product there for commercial reasons and therefore the onus is on the company to adjust the product to fit the requirements of that society. All sorts of examples. Um, eating meat in Hinduism or eating pork in Islam. Now, these are forbidden. So a company like McDonald's, say who wishes to set up in those countries, uh, McDonald's will have to modify its product range to, to sell products that are suitable in those countries, whilst at the same time using the McDonald method of selling and uh, its its marketing and its its way of presenting itself and dealing with the customer. But it must accommodate the type of society that it's wishing to enter. Education is also an issue. The level of education is a cultural factor. Education difference differs widely in countries. Some countries, the majority of people may be illiterate. Uh, if the company wishes to sell in a country such as that, it will have to modify its marketing. It will have to look for ways of marketing the product that will reach the majority of the people. Some countries will be extremely advanced and have very high technical knowledge. For example, selling in Japan or selling in South Korea, selling in many parts of Asia, the societies are very advanced and therefore the company will have to, to tailor its product accordingly as well. The success of sales communications depends on the level of education. Customers must be able to understand the product and its key features. That is certainly the case. So in some societies where education uh, is has not been developed significantly, then the customers, the petition, potential customers, will have problems understanding the product, understanding the uses of the product or how to use the product effectively. Or They may not 
it may inhibit the the market it may it may detract from the the possibility of having significant sales in those societies and that's a problem for the marketing team to address how to get over that problem sales tactics and products must be modified to meet local education needs so it could be the case that the use of diagrams rather than written instructions may be a solution to a society which is mostly illiterate or it could be the use of um, some sort of pictorial description of how to use the product and in what context to use it and, and what are its characteristics and its its uh, its uses it's very difficult and it's also difficult because that approach may lay itself open to claims that it's condescending or it's insulting because it's it's using pictures as opposed to written descriptions so the company will have to look carefully at how to get over the problem if it wishes to sell in a society such as that language is all always a barrier um, salespeople must speak fluently in the country in which they operate and misunderstandings in language may affect sales potential it's not just speaking the language but it's understanding the language fluently because language has got nuance we have it in the English language uh, it's the way we say things we may say things in a certain way which if it was written it would mean one thing and if we say it in a certain way it means something else uh, but that's the idea of a living language that's the idea of an evolving language but when dealing with two societies which speak totally different languages then the onus is on the business, on the company to ensure that it understands the local language um, some countries may struggle to understand the English language and may not be able to pronounce certain words or phrases and that's understandable uh, people who speak English may have the same problem if they go to that country um, people from England who go on holidays to Germany or Italy or France or wherever in Europe may have problems problems of pronunciation problems of understanding local expressions so there are language issues company logo and product design must be taken into consideration as well some words may be favorable or it may also depict some negative meaning so it's important that advertisements and the company logo or the mission statement is meaningful in the language in which the company wishes to operate that language may have certain requirements and the use of certain words may be seen as inflammatory or insulting so it's important that the company doesn't just simply translate from say English into another language it gets an expert in the language to do the translation and then has it verified by other experts that it is uh, acceptable in that society the social organization of the society should also be taken into account um, social arrangements and norms of the society could present cultural barriers uh, differences in social arrangement impacts on the need of the customers uh, societies may be highly stratified there may be a very strict upper class quite a strict middle class and a, and a working class or in some societies it may be several layers, many layers um, and each one, each layer if we accept that there are different layers in society different layers, people with different incomes different lifestyles and different uh, traditions even if we accept that then the company will have to segment its market will have to look carefully which segment it's selling to 
and perhaps if it sells to one segment that will prohibit the company from selling to other segments so if it sells to um, people who are working class then the upper class in that society may not wish to acquire that product because they see it as a stigma they see it as not acceptable given their rank Um, the case also is, in, in the West, we tend to have nuclear families. However, in Eastern countries, there are more extended families. So, decision-making and consumption units may be more spread out in some, some families. And it's a question of looking at the social organization. How are families structured? So, in, in many perhaps Asian families, it could be that the, the grandparents, the parents and the children all live in one large house. And who is, who is the head of that household? It may not be the person who is working and, and earning most. It may be the grandfather who is retired and, and extremely old. Or the grandmother who is extremely old. So it's important for the, the business, if it wishes to sell overseas, to understand the social structure and issues such as that. Social arrangements um, of society present cultural barriers and they need to be taken into account. The importance of social class must be taken into consideration when trying to sell overseas. It's essential because as I said it does lead to segmentation of the market and selling to one group in the society may stop the business from selling to a different group in society. So the company must be careful how it selects who it's going to sell to. There may be political factors also Political arrangements is another factor to be taken into consideration and it may impact on sales strategies. Political factors include trade barriers, government policy on pricing, legislation, the economy and legal considerations. Now these are big issues. Uh, what is the approach of the government? Does the government wish to uh, ease up on trade barriers? Does it wish to encourage international trade? Does the government wish to uh, control prices? What's the legislation governing businesses in the country? And what's the state of the economy? And What's the overall macroeconomic policy of the government in that society? These are big issues but the company that wishes to sell in that society needs to take these into account. If it's going to make a significant investment in another country to find that the government will change in a couple of years time and um, the new government will nationalize its business or will stop international trade or will increase taxes significantly or whatever, the company needs to be aware of this. So taking political factors into account is important if the company is aiming to sell internationally. It may also be the case that countries have regulations about promotion, about pricing and about distribution channels. Uh, countries may regulate types of advertisements or advertisements for certain products or the government may wish to discriminate in favour of domestically produced products and companies trying to sell into that market may experience uh, the wrath of the government, may experience problems from the government in trying to get access to the market. So there are issues about political stability, international relations, democracy, capitalism, and they all must be evaluated. The the company must take these into account. If it doesn't, it could find itself in a position where it's made a significant investment and it stands to lose a lot. 
Attitudes and values. Well, the attitudes and values and social norms must be taken into account. What's seen as acceptable behaviour in one country may not be acceptable in another. And the company must be aware of this. Um, China, for example, follows the, the principle of Guangxi, keeping face. However, in Western societies, we use binding contracts to develop business relationships. So in China, the contracts may be verbal. They may be verbal and they may be very loosely articulated, but people will honour it because they don't want to be seen to lose face. They want to see that they are, they want to be seen as honourable people who have done the right thing. They have delivered what they promised. Whereas in Western societies, uh, for whatever reason, perhaps we need more binding contracts to stop us cheating each other. In Islamic countries, uh, word of mouth is, is used instead of contracts. It's often used, perhaps not universally, not 100%, but a lot of the time in Islamic countries, or so the literature would suggest, contracts are by word of mouth. And people who do not honour the contract are seen as dishonourable. That's a disgrace. They're bringing disgrace on themselves and on their families. So they will honour the contracts so as to be seen to be honourable. It's a cultural attitude, it's a cultural value. And perhaps uh, in the West it's difficult for us to understand the power of that. These are some of the issues that we need to take into account when we are considering uh, diversifying to overseas markets or setting up an outlet in an overseas market. So international trade must involve these various components and these various components must be taken into account when considering um, moving to another country or selling in another country or setting up a, a production unit or a distribution unit in another country. And as we've seen they're all not economic, these are cultural issues, they're political issues, they are aesthetic issues and so on. And that's all I'm going to deal with in this session so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.